Welcome to History Matters, where we explore the fascinating stories of the past. In this video, we will examine one of the most dramatic events in history, the fall of the Western Roman Empire. How did the mighty Rome collapse under the pressure of barbarian invasions, internal strife, and cultural decay? And what was the impact of its fall on the Western world? Let's find out, the year is 476 AD. A young boy named Romulus Augustus sits on the throne of the Western Roman Empire. He is the last in a long line of emperors who ruled over a vast territory that stretched from Britain to North Africa. But his empire is a shadow of its former glory. Most of its provinces have been overrun by various barbarian groups, such as the Goths, the Vandals, the Franks, and the Huns. The Eastern Roman Empire, also known as the Byzantine Empire, still survives in Constantinople, but it has little interest in helping its western counterpart, Romulus Augustus is not a real emperor. He is a puppet of a powerful general named Orestes, who controls the army and the government. Orestes has a problem, he needs to pay his soldiers, who are mostly barbarians themselves. He decides to take land from the Roman citizens and give it to his troops. But this plan backfires. The soldiers are not satisfied with the land they receive. They rebel against Orestes and choose one of their own as their leader, a Germanic chief named Odoacer. Odoacer marches on Ravenna, the capital of the Western Empire. He defeats Orestes and captures Romulus Augustus. He spares the boy's life, but sends him into exile. He then declares himself the king of Italy and sends a message to the emperor of the east, Zeno. He tells him that there is no need for two emperors, and that he will rule as Zeno's representative in the west. Zeno reluctantly agrees. This marks the end of the Western Roman Empire, but how did the empire reach this point of collapse? To answer this question, we need to go back to the 4th century, when the empire faced a series of challenges that it could not overcome. Point one of these challenges was the invasion of the Goths, a Germanic people who lived north of the Danube River. The Goths were fleeing from the Huns, a fierce nomadic tribe from Central Asia. They asked the Romans for permission to settle in their lands as refugees. The Romans agreed, but treated them poorly. They exploited them, starved them, and sold them into slavery, the Goths rebelled against the Romans in 378 AD. They fought a decisive battle at Adrianople, where they defeated and killed the Emperor Valens. This was a huge blow to the Roman army, which lost most of its elite troops. The Goths then roamed freely across the Balkans and Greece, plundering and raiding as they went out in 395 AD, the Roman Empire was divided into two halves, the East and the West. The East was richer, more populous, and more stable. The West was poorer, less populated, and more vulnerable. The two halves had different interests and often clashed with each other, the West was ruled by a weak and incompetent emperor named Honorius. He relied on a powerful general named Stilicho, who was half Roman and half Goth. Stilicho tried to defend the West from the barbarian attacks, but he faced opposition from the Eastern Emperor, Arcadius, who distrusted him. Stilicho also faced a rebellion from a usurper named Alaric, who was the leader of the Goths, Alaric wanted to settle his people in the Roman lands and demanded a ransom from Honorius. Honorius refused to pay and ordered Stilicho to stop him. Stilicho managed to defeat Alaric several times, but he could not destroy him. Alaric kept coming back, demanding more concessions from the Romans. In 408 AD, Stilicho was accused of treason and executed by Honorius. This was a fatal mistake. Without Stilicho, the West had no effective leader. The army mutinied and killed many of the Roman officials. The barbarians took advantage of the chaos and invaded the empire from all sides, Alaric marched on Rome, the Eternal City, and besieged it three times. The first two times, he was persuaded to leave by paying a huge ransom. The third time, in 410 AD, he sacked the city and looted it for three days. This was a shocking event that shook the Roman world. Rome, the center of civilization, had fallen to the barbarians, but Rome was not the only city that fell. In the next decades, the Western Empire lost most of its territory to different barbarian kingdoms. Britain, Gaul, Spain, and North Africa were taken over by the Vandals, the Swabians, the Visigoths, and others. The Romans had to rely on barbarian soldiers and mercenaries to defend their borders, but they often turned against them or switched sides, the last hope for the West was a general named Aetius, who fought bravely against the barbarians and even allied with some of them. He faced the greatest threat of his time, the Huns, led by the fearsome Attila. The Huns were a horde of warriors who swept across Europe, destroying everything in their path. They demanded tribute from the Romans and threatened to invade their lands. In 451 AD, Aetius and his allies faced Attila and his army at the Battle of the Catalanian Plains, near Chalons in France. It was one of the largest and bloodiest battles in history. The outcome was inconclusive, but the Huns were stopped from advancing further into Gaul. 
The next year, Attila invaded Italy, but he was persuaded to leave by Pope Leo I, who appealed to his superstition. Attila died soon after, and his empire collapsed. Aetius was the last great Roman general, but he was not rewarded for his deeds. He was murdered by the Emperor Valentinian III, who was jealous of his power and popularity. Valentinian was himself assassinated by two of Aetius' followers. The West was plunged into anarchy and civil war, the last emperor to rule over a united Western Empire was Julius Nepos, who was appointed by the Eastern Emperor Leo I in 474 AD. He tried to restore order and stability, but he faced resistance from the Roman aristocracy and the army. He was deposed by a general named Orestes, who made his son Romulus Augustus the emperor. Orestes refused to grant land to the barbarian soldiers in his army. They rebelled and chose Odoacer as their leader, who overthrew Romulus and ended the Western Empire, but why did the Western Empire fall, while the Eastern Empire survived? What were the internal problems that weakened the empire and made it vulnerable to external threats, one of the main problems was the size and complexity of the empire. It was too large and difficult to manage, especially with the limited communication and transportation of the time. The empire was divided into many provinces, each with its own governor, administration, and army. The provinces were often in conflict with each other, or with the central government. The emperors had to deal with constant rebellions, usurpations, and coups. Another problem was the economy. The empire depended on a constant influx of slaves and taxes to sustain its military and bureaucratic machine. But the sources of slaves and taxes dried up as the empire stopped expanding and faced invasions. The empire had to spend more than it earned, and resorted to debasing its currency and raising taxes. This led to inflation, corruption, and social unrest. A third problem was the army. The army was the backbone of the empire, but it also became its Achilles heel. The army was expensive to maintain and hard to recruit. The quality and loyalty of the soldiers declined as the empire hired more and more barbarians, who had different cultures and values. The army also became a source of political instability, as generals competed for power and influence. A fourth problem was the leadership. The empire suffered from a lack of competent and stable rulers. The succession of emperors was often violent and chaotic, with many emperors being assassinated or overthrown. The emperors were isolated and detached from the realities of the empire. They relied on corrupt and greedy officials, who exploited the people and enriched themselves. A fifth problem was the culture. The empire faced a crisis of identity and values. The traditional Roman virtues of patriotism, discipline, and civic duty were eroded by decadence, corruption, and apathy. The people lost their sense of belonging and loyalty to the empire. They became more interested in their personal affairs and pleasures than in the common good. The empire also faced religious conflicts, as Christianity spread and challenged the pagan beliefs and practices of the Romans. Christianity divided the empire into different sects and factions, some of which were persecuted by the emperors. The Eastern Empire, on the other hand, managed to survive and thrive for another thousand years. It had several advantages over the West. It had a stronger economy, based on trade and agriculture. It had a more centralized and efficient administration, led by capable and powerful emperors. It had a more professional and loyal army, composed of native and well-trained soldiers. It had a more cohesive and stable culture, based on Greek and Roman traditions and Orthodox Christianity, the fall of the Western Roman Empire had a profound impact on the Western world. It marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new one, the Middle Ages. It led to the fragmentation and transformation of Europe into various barbarian kingdoms, some of which eventually evolved into modern nations. It also led to the decline of literacy, art, science, and law, and the rise of feudalism, the church, and the papacy. It created a cultural and political gap between the East and the West, which lasted for centuries. The legacy of the Roman Empire, however, did not disappear. It was preserved and transmitted by various agents, such as the Byzantines, the Franks, the Arabs, the Vikings, and the Renaissance. It influenced the development of Western civilization, in terms of language, law, politics, religion, and culture. It inspired generations of artists, writers, thinkers, and leaders, who admired and emulated the achievements of the Romans. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts and questions. Until next time, remember, history matters.